Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. Happy beginning of October. I am so excited to be moving into the new season with all of you. And if you feel guided to connect with this community, I would love to hear from you in the comments under this video. Let me know how you've been feeling recently, if you've been feeling any type of an energy shift following this change in the seasons. I really do love just building this beautiful community here through YouTube and if you do resonate with my energy and with the energy here on this channel, I also invite you to subscribe. An added benefit to subscribing is that it does allow me to pick up more easily on your energy and channel more specifically for you and your situation. In today's video, we are, of course, doing a collective reading here. I do channel collective readings and energy updates for both the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine Collective on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as I was shuffling the traditional tarot cards, I can tell my guides already want me to get into the messages because a card just flew out. Also, I have to tell you that I heard the name Charles coming through for someone. I always say this, but whenever I channel specific names, details, dates, numbers, do keep in mind that these are just added personalized details for specific individuals, so they won't necessarily connect with everyone listening, and of course that is perfectly okay. Always use your own intuition when it comes to determining what messages are for you within these readings. But the first card to come out here is the chariots. Also, the number seven might connect with someone the month of July or the number 777. Connected with this card, we have the nine of cups. This is a really powerful card speaking to manifestation. For some reason, I heard a name with an S-H-A-R, potentially Sharon for someone this Nine of Cups card speaks to the realization, and I wanted to say of a long-held dream or many long-held dreams. I'm hearing revisiting childhood dreams. So I'm especially picking up on a subset of Divine Feminine's listening who might be feeling as though during this phase of their life, they are being called to resurrect certain dreams or goals that they may have had for themselves as a child, or to really look back and ask themselves what they dreamt about, what they wanted for themselves or their life long before society programmed them to believe they couldn't attain it or weren't worthy of it. And of course, those are just artificial limiting beliefs because you are a limitless being with unlimited creative power. And I feel your guides really directing you back into that power. You might be having vivid dreams I'm really getting that for someone listening as well. And whether you are consciously aware fully of those dreams or not, I'm sensing that through these dreams, your spirit guides might be visiting you. You might be visited by soul connections that you are very much connected to, whether they are here incarnated or loved ones who have passed on, who are continuing to protect and guide you. So I'm seeing someone writing in a dream journal. You might find it beneficial to start writing down your dreams when you first awaken. This act of writing down your dreams is really profound because it actually trains your mind to dream more lucidly and to remember your dreams more consciously. I'm getting the name Lucy for someone for some reason as well. So the chariot stands for overcoming obstacles. And through the overcoming of obstacles, having the victory. And in fact, what I feel someone's guide saying is 
And I'm already looking ahead to the next card, which is the Empress, which of course is tying in with this self-actualizing, creative, empowered, divine feminine energy here. But what I was saying with the chariot card is I feel that the guides are really emphasizing that whatever obstacles you've gone through, they weren't just roadblocks on your path. Your obstacles have actually been your catalysts. In your shadow, you found your greatest light. You found your greatest gift to give to the planet's. So of course we have the Empress here. Now this card can speak to fertility, pregnancy, motherhood. Of course it won't apply literally that way for everyone, but for some of you, you might be wanting to have a child. You might be sensing the presence of what we call spirit babies, which of course I can do a whole separate probably series of videos on the concept of spirit babies and i know many of you are familiar with this as well but i'm getting that some of you who desire to have children in the future in this lifetime might be energetically or spiritually connecting with the soul essence the energy of these children who are already in spirit form who have already chosen you as the one they want to be born through and in this sense they are already your spirit children there is already this sort of energetic connection. I wanted to call it like an umbilical cord connection, but spiritually that is already in place. So that won't be for everyone. I'm getting that might only connect with 10 to 20% of people listening. For some of you, this could represent you being in this very self-nurturing energy, you being in the process of reparenting yourself, nurturing yourself and in doing so, moving into a new beginning in your life, I'm getting this very fresh energy for you right now, especially those of you who are divine feminines listening, moving into like the word new just keeps standing out, new love. And when I say new love, this could be new love with the same physical person, because what we are learning is that nothing in our lives is stagnant everything moves in cycles and seasons and so often as a humankind we mistakenly believe that certain things in our life are meant to stay exactly the same and if they change or go through a period of dormancy what we think of in nature as a winter we then mistakenly believe that they are dead or that they are gone or that it has ended. So for example, in a relationship, if there's a period of time in 3D when things appear to be very barren, very cold, very dark or confusing, we in our human physical form interpret this as an ending. But for many of you listening, there may still be that desire to to breathe fresh life into a connection that has felt in that period of stagnancy, that has felt in that winter. And for those of you listening who are resonating in that way, which of course may not necessarily be for everyone, always utilize your intuition above all else. But for you, I feel your guides really urging you to have hope and trust in the seasons of this relationship and this connection, just as you trust in the seasons of nature. However, at this time, when it comes to if this is a relationship, you and this other person with the two of swords reversed i'm getting that it might feel like things are in a kind of delay period things might appear to be stuck i'm seeing cherry blossom trees in my mind's eye which is really interesting because my divine counterparts actually had a dream about these trees and was telling me about it and I don't share much from my personal life when it comes to my own divine counterpartnership journey and twin flame journey, but I wanted to share that because he is the divine masculine in our connection. And so I feel this speaks to the fact that many divine masculines are, again, really, as I said in the last reading, opening to their spiritual gifts, their abilities, they're receiving signs and messages and symbols 
through dreams. And it's interesting because what my divine masculine was saying is how in the dream, he felt that it symbolized a beautiful love connection that needed to be nurtured in order to grow and needed to be to be fed and watered and cared for but when cared for would grow into something beautiful and i'm just sharing that because i feel that many of you might be in a situation where you are again going through some kind of very challenging season with someone who is holding this very precious space in your heart, in your soul, whether that's a soulmate, a twin flame, a divine counterpart, whoever that is to you. And maybe at some level, those labels don't matter as much as the energy that caused you to give it a label, the energy that activated you, that awakened you, that has moved you into this next phase of your life because i feel something about this connection you're dealing with whoever i'm speaking to it has activated you it has catalyzed you but recently again there could have been this phase of winter and i feel that message coming through of sometimes we have to have the level of courage and of surrender to trust the seasons of our own life, to trust that there is a spring behind every winter, to trust that just because something appears to be dead doesn't mean it's not going to be resurrected in a different season. So I don't know who needed to hear that, but if that message did re reach you and was significant to you, I would love to hear from you in the comments. And whenever, because I felt myself beginning to tap into this divine masculine energy and a lot of really challenging cards started coming through. So the masculines are releasing a lot right now and divine feminine you might find that consciously or subconsciously, a lot of your energy at this time is being diverted to assist the divine masculine collective and particularly a divine masculine you are more intimately, closely connected to at a soul level. And because of this diversion of your energy, I keep seeing something about the month of March and the color green for someone also. Because of this diversion of your energy to assist the divine masculine collective and particularly your divine counterparts, you might feel drained without knowing why. You might need to take a lot of time to physically rest and sleep and to just sit with yourself, to nourish yourself. And you might have the human tendency to be hard on yourself for taking this time and space but what you need to understand is you are transmuting so much more than you know. You, Your guides are saying like consciously you have no idea how much heavy, dense energy you are shifting out of your being. And again, there is in addition to that, this diversion of energy to your divine masculine or to the divine masculine collective. If you don't resonate with being connected to one particular masculine energy, so this may be bringing up a lot of these feelings of fatigue, but just like when your car is out of gas and on empty, you don't ask yourself, well, where have I been to use up so much gas? How is this possible? How am I empty again? You simply go to the pump and refuel and your guides are asking you to give yourself the same kind of the same kind of non-judgment when it comes to the refueling you need, the nourishing you need, even if it seems more frequent than usual, because just like, it's almost as though this is kind of a loose metaphor. I'm not sure this is going to perfectly connect, but my guides are showing me also with the car metaphor, it's almost like when you are diverting energy in this somewhat subconscious way, 
that is happening for the purpose of assisting another part of the collective and shifting, such as the divine masculine collective, if you're a divine feminine. When you're diverting energy in this way subconsciously, it's almost like someone else is driving your car. Really, it's not someone else, which is why this isn't the closest, best metaphor, because really it's you, but at a higher level. It's your higher self driving your car. For example, doing spiritual or energetic work unconsciously while you are sleeping in the astral realm, which might require more sleep. This is just one small example the way this applies, if it applies for you, could be very unique to your circumstances, but I do hope this message reaches you if this is something that you've been dealing with now. With that being said, I feel like there is more to dive into there. So in the extended version of the reading on Patreon, I will be channeling more in depth as to how you, especially you who connect here as a Divine Feminine, may be unconsciously diverting energy to assist your divine masculine at this time or the divine masculine collective more generally and the effects this might be having on you so i am going to write that down really quick so i remember to channel that in the extended and if you do feel guided to the extended reading this is available through our beautiful soul tribe on patreon and as always the link to the patreon is in the pinned comments and description box under this video wow there's just the most beautiful sunset outside i'm recording this reading as of two days actually prior to when it is premiering this is because of course time doesn't really exist on an energetic level sometimes i record these readings immediately before it premieres as a live premiere at 12 pm est other times i do them the day before and for some reason my guides were just really pushing me to get out these messages in a recording today so that usually tells me that i'm in the right energy the right headspace to channel for you what will be relevant whenever you come across this video because all of these videos are timeless so regardless of whether you receive a message from this video on October 3rd 2022 when it premieres or months afterwards years afterwards trust that the messages are for you trust that whenever you meet anything whether it's a person a piece of information someone you stumble across or information you stumble across online there is really no stumbling there's no there's no coincidence everything is connected and we are all connected and it's really beautiful that we can experience consciously more of that connectedness now that we have platforms that connect us virtually from all different places in the world. So thank you for being part of that here with me. So I already pulled some cards to begin speaking to the divine masculine energy. There have been major shifts taking place for divine masculines. So the card overarching these other four cards that really sets the tone is choice. And this is the two of wands card. The masculines are being pushed to, to make a choice. But when I say make a choice, it's not as simple as a choice between two places or two people or anything like that. And it's really not a choice they are consciously even making. They are actually being divinely, divinely pushed from, I should say divinely realigned from a lower vibrational, unawakened, wounded timeline, or really a state of being that kept them attached to those lower vibrational trajectories that then we refer to as a timeline. They are being pushed from that to this higher path, to this higher timeline. And this realignment process has been very, very intense for the divine masculine. Yeah, indecision in the reverse position. 
The fact that this emotion card is coming out reversed is really synchronistic because like I was just sharing with the masculine, it's not so much consciously making a choice. It's like indecision reversed. That decision has already been made on a soul level. I sense this profound resolve, this determination emanating from the divine masculine collective to to align with this higher path, this different way of being. And yet the confusing part for the masculines is although they are aware of this higher path for themselves, they are beginning to open their eyes and to wake up spiritually to themselves, to their lives, to this connection. If there is a 3D manifested soul connection at play here, such as a twin flame situation. However, the pain is coming in because while they are awakening spiritually, their 3D physical human self is still not fully feeling connected to the energy of unconditional love, meaning they haven't yet learned how to fully love and accept themselves and therefore feel worthy of unconditional love. It's like they see this higher path, but they aren't yet sure if they're feeling worthy of it. And this is bringing up a lot of really complicated emotions for the divine masculine emotions, such as the three of swords card that came out reverse, which speaks to releasing pain and can also speak to overcoming a period of darkness mentally or emotionally. So there might be masculines here who have been dealing with a really mentally or emotionally dark period of time. And what is required to move them out of this dark period of time is forgiveness. And when I use that word forgiveness, I mean releasing of the past in order to allow the future of something to be new, whether it's the future of a connection, the future of themselves and their life, the future of their relationships. For many masculines, I'm feeling that they're being called to forgive, to forgive in their energy field someone or something who is most likely never going to give them closure or forgive them back. Now, some of you as divine feminines may actually be resonating with some of these divine masculines on your inner field because we do each have a balance of divine masculine and divine feminine energy within us. But I just keep seeing specifically for some divine masculines, family members, people from their past that may have caused them a lot of pain, that may have caused them a lot of hardship, and with whom they are never maybe going to fully feel closure with in the physical 3D world. And the call from their higher self and their guides to forgive not for the other person, but for themselves to let go of the parts of themselves that were self-protecting because of the ways in which this other person wounded them to see this other person clearly. And I keep saying person, it could be forgiving a situation, forgiving, releasing a certain past way of being. All of this feels very dense, very karmic, very much as though their soul decided to experience a lot of heaviness or darkness that has now essentially become kind of stuck in their energy field through lack of forgiveness and is being called to release because I feel a lot of this for the masculines may have solidified into feelings of resentments or manifested as the the ego driven meaning the primal human survival instinct driven need to self-protect but what this self-protection has done is it's overextended itself and actually prevented the masculines from connecting in with that energy of love and when it comes to their divine feminine it may have prevented them from feeling their own worthiness of this love connection so forgiveness releasing of the past is the key for the divine masculines at this time and i see that once this forgiveness is in place and this feeling of resentment or the fear causing them to self-protect and shut down from love. Once that is cleared out of their being, I see that this 
this two of swords reversed energy really becomes undone this energy of feeling like there's a delay this stagnancy this from the divine feminine perspective you may have looked at the masculine thinking he looked indecisive even though in his heart and soul there is this resolve there's this determination there's this awakening taking place within him and so with ace of pentacles reversed this can speak to a loss of financial control and i see that for many divine masculines this may not literally apply this way for all masculines but i see that either specifically in finances and work or perhaps just in other areas of their 3d life there is this theme of and i'm hearing i keep hearing since like 2020 which of course makes sense with the things going on in the world at that time but i'm getting that for divine masculines, there is this newfound sense of unreliability when it comes to things they used to put stock in in the physical 3D world, things they used to rely on for a sense of identity or stability in 3D no longer feel stable to them. And this is causing a lot of emotional upheaval and even potentially propelled them into a period of time with the sun card reversed where they simply felt very felt as though there was like an external force holding them down or oppressing them or keeping them from moving forward where they felt like things in their life were just not moving forward in the way that they desired them to and i'm speaking a lot here in connection with finances with work for the masculine but all of this was occurring because as i've said in previous readings whenever something feels stuck it feels like it's not moving ahead very often it's pushing us with Within. And so the divine masculine collective has been pushed within themselves through this stagnancy and this feeling of no longer being able to rely upon their external world for confidence, for support, for this artificial sense of stability. And because of that, they are learning to redefine themselves from the inside out. And this is really amounting to this profound spiritual awakening within the divine masculine energy field. So with that being said, while the masculines are busy at the energetic spiritual level, and in the extended version of the reading, I will be channeling more into what the divine masculine is thinking and feeling at this time. I know we haven't gotten into many love-related messages from the masculines, but that's not because the love for a divine feminine counterpart or someone they are connected with isn't there. It's because they felt very burdened down by many different dynamics that are coming undone that have been needing to come undone in their life related to work, career, their emotions, really, again, exploring this this wounding within them at the subconscious level whether they realize fully consciously that they're doing this exploration within themselves or not it is taking place the choice has already been made on a soul level to awaken to rise and now there is just this undoing this unraveling this ego death taking place within them so in the extended version of the reading i will also channel more love specific messages so if you are a divine feminine and you are connected in a romantic situation with a specific divine masculine energy and this intuitively seems to be connecting with what he's going through then in the extended version of the reading i will be channeling more love messages from this masculine to his divine feminine counterpart so again the link to the extended is in the pinned comments and description box under this video but for now, I am going to close this reading with just one final card from the Rumi Oracle deck. And I paused for a second because the exact same card came out that actually came out in Friday's reading, Divine Mother Manifests. Something about long hair might connect with someone also flowers in someone's hair I'm seeing, as well as the number 1515. So I'm going to close this reading by sharing a little bit from the guidebook here. This oracle comes with guidance for you. 
No matter whether or not things appear to be working out, they are, and you are being held in the loving protection of the Divine Mother to keep you from straying from your highest path in divine destiny. There is work for you to do upon this planet in your own unique way. It is the work of love. And I know that message was the same message that came out in the last reading, but I feel that came through for a reason as everything does. That message was really in need of reiteration for many of us in the collective at this time. So I do hope that something from today's reading connected with you in a personal, meaningful way. As always, only take what connects with you intuitively from these readings and leave the rest. I would love to hear from you in the comments under this video if you would like to share which messages connected to you personally. Otherwise, I am wishing you a beautiful rest of your week. The link to the extended reading which we will be heading over to now is in the pinned comment and description box. Have a beautiful day and I will talk to you again in Wednesday's reading.